What's going on guys? Welcome back to my personal channel. Welcome back to another Transfer Daily video for you guys today. Although I do say Transfer Daily with the amount of football games that's been going on. It's been really hard to focus on the transfers. Especially seen as we've more or less finished it now with Edward Mendy coming in. But apparently we're in for another move for Declan Rice. We're going to talk about that towards the end of the video. What I do want to talk about though is Marcus Alonso and a lot of developments around him that's come out um, over the last couple of hours. We're going to chat about that in this video. Frank Lampard is not happy with Marcus Alonso, as you guys can see from the title. And we're going to talk about why. But before I start this video, as usual, if you guys haven't done so already, please smash that subscribe button. Hit the like button as well and press the bell notification button as well to be the first guy to know whenever we release any new content on this channel. Now, we already know the situation at halftime. We're going in 3-0 down. It was an awful performance from Marcus Alonso. I also had Mateo Kovacic in there because he gets in there a little bit into this story. They both got substituted at half time. And both substitutions did make sense if we're going to be real about it. First off, Kylam Hudson Doy and Asbel Equator instantly changed up the game. We were a lot more solid on the left hand side of Asbel Equator. And Callum Hudson Doy just terrorised that left hand side and even got a goal to his name towards the end of the match as well. So the substitutions made sense, and especially with the performances of Kovacic and Alonso as well, it did make sense. Kovacic wasn't at his usual best. Marcus Alonso was just terrible throughout the first half and he gave away two goals which he had key errors in those leads up in the build up to both of those goals as well. But while Mateo Kovacic just went and sat down on the bench just like everyone else did, Marcus Alonso went to the team coach after taking a shower. And observers at the game did spot Alonso back, with the, back in the ground 10-15 minutes after the restart. But it was a different area to where the away group were expected to be, especially with with virus protocols in place. I can't say the word because I might get demonetized. But after the game, apparently Frank Lampard gave Alonso the biggest bollocking of his managerial career. Apparently, in fact, uh, there were multiple sources saying that they've never seen Frank Lampard that angry before, and that they'll be surprised if Marcus Alonso even features in the team for the rest of the season. He, the uh, sources saying it was the Athletic, by the way. The sources say it was the angriest they've ever seen him as he lambasted Alonso for his actions in front of stunned teammates. It's believed the Chelsea put the boss made a point of saying that while the team had shown great togetherness in the second half, determination and character to fight back from three goals down to earn a point, the Spain international had shown he wasn't bothered about the team and that he made the situation all about him. One source explains. The players were saying that they've never seen the manager like this. It kicked off after the game and he was going mad at Alonso. Some were talking about how they'd be surprised if he plays for Chelsea ever again. Now, I can understand Alonso being annoyed at his own performance. I mean, to be honest, I'll be real. We were all annoyed at it as well. And if you're there embarrassing yourself throughout that first half and you get hauled off for half time, I get that you're going to be angry. But the way he dealt with that anger wasn't correct and it wasn't correct in the eyes of Frank Lampard either. Everything gets over exaggerated a lot in the media like you see the way if, if one thing goes wrong If a player says one thing that sounds iffy in a press conference and now sounds like he's going to leave the club Everything gets over exaggerated and there's hella hyperbole around it I'm probably guilty of it as well But that's also why Alonso couldn't have done what he did if he goes straight into a team coach after being substituted at half time That sounds like he's making an action against Frank Lampard It looks like he's angry at Frank Lampard and I get why Frank Lampard's looking to stamp that out We know there's been a huge history of player power at this club and Managers not being able to get their way with certain players and Frank Lampard has been quick to stamp that out when he's since he's joined Chelsea Do you, if you remember the David Luiz situation, which I think was because David Luiz and him had an argument after one of the friendlies and then Lampard pushed him down to fourth choice centre back because he didn't like the way he was speaking to him. It's all about respect and here's the thing, there is a, there is a ladder, there is a hierarchy and there has to be respect for the manager and I think Fra Marcus Alonso's actions can be pursued as something that was against the manager. It might not have been done from Marcus Alonso's intent, he might have just got a bollocking because he was just angry at his own performance, he didn't want to come out. But there's a way you go about things. I'm sure that you've been trained to do that in football. So in the case of Marcus Alonso, I think it's just silly. It's another error from him, if we're being honest. I'm going to call it another error. But this could mean Marcus Alonso is going out the door because we know Frank Lampard is looking to sell in order to buy, especially in the case of Declan Rice. Sources have just come out saying that we are trying to go in for Declan Rice again, but we need to sell first in order to do so. And Emerson was looking like one of the names that was initially going to be sold, but 
now with what's happened with Marcus Alonso, it looks like it could be him. I think, uh, who was it? Inter Milan are interested in him. Juventus are interested in him as well. Emerson has also attracted interest from West Ham, but maybe Chelsea will be trying to see if they can push uh, Marcus Alonso out the door instead. I, I wouldn't say he doesn't start towards the end of the season if he ends up staying at Chelsea because I do think there'll end up being more opportunities for him, especially in the case of how cramped the fixture the fixture is going to be for us this entire season, especially through Christmas. You're seeing, look at Tottenham for an example, which we're going to talk about in the preview tomorrow. Tottenham have four games this week. They played on Sunday, they play us, t they play us tomorrow, they play again on Thursday, and they play again on Sunday. Everything is being rushed because we need to try and finish the season before the Euro starts. So even if Marcus Alonso stays, I do think he'll end up getting some sort of game time. I just don't know if he ends up staying anymore. I think Emerson definitely starts against Tottenham. And I think it's probably the biggest game of his life. If he doesn't have a bad game, it might be both of them out the door. Which, if we end up getting two left backs in, I wouldn't mind. But I don't think that that's going to happen. Marcus Alonso, it does come at the worst possible time, though. Because Ben Chilwell is on his way back from full match fitness. And Ben Chilwell was already going to be the guy replacing Marcus Alonso. He had the first three games this season to try and prove why he should still be fighting for that spot. And I did say about competition throughout the entire squad. It should be able to bring the best out of each player. Because they know that their place isn't secure. Marcus Alonso hasn't had a single good game. Brighton game, he got turned inside out by Tarek Lamptey. Liverpool game, do I call it the best out of the three? It's probably the best out of a bad bunch. I don't think he did as much wrong, but you're still getting done up on that left-hand side. And we all know about the first half from hell. There's nearly a bakayoko s performance from West Brom on Saturday. It was a terrible performance and... I'll be real, if we, if we end up getting either of them, it won't make any much of a difference because I don't think either Alonso or Emerson should be starting for us. I've said that since sorry season, I think. Uh, go, the going forward finger Marcus Alonso doesn't even matter that much to us. I get it means something when we're playing five at the back and our attack isn't as strong as it is now, but now we have much better attackers. We don't really need Marcus Alonso contributing as much as he initially did. And even in the case of that, the going forward thing was just a bit of a myth if we were speaking about it. How many times do we see him on the left-hand side and he passed the ball sideways or backwards? Or he'd hit one of those awful crosses? Like, I remember Sarri's last season and Eden Hazard. Every single game, he'd have his hands up in the air over something that Marcus Alonso did. Yes, he'd get the odd goal. I'm never going to say anything about his finishing ability. But playing five at the back means that you have a lot of space on that far-hand side, which means that you are have space to lick a shot in from that left hand side he's a good finisher but that's also the same reason why no one's trying to play him left wing no one's trying to play him left forward or anything like that that we were trying to say going forward it is a little bit of a myth and if we end up selling marcus alonso it'll be a thanks to the memories but it is definitely time to say goodbye let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below i'll talk a little bit about the tottenham game now but i'll I'll save most of it for the preview. I've got a preview of We Are Tottenham TV, if I haven't already mentioned, which I think I've done three times already. That will be out on this channel tomorrow. But about this Tottenham game, we have to win this game. I can't lie, because it's not even bragging rights. It'll be embarrassing if we lose this game. Jose Mourinho has said Spurs are unable to compete against Chelsea in the Carabao Cup due to a fixture pileup. I said I'd like to fight for the Carabao Cup, but I don't think I can because we have a game on Thursday that gives us more money as the Champions League, as the group stage, the Europa League as well. And I know there's going to be hella rotations in this match, but I'm getting serious Liverpool 2-0 away 2014 vibes. You know, the game where Steven Gerrard slipped because we were in that same position where we had a big game against Atletico two or three days, two or three days after and we needed to rest players. Played our entire B team, wasted time from the first minute to the last and absolutely shit out the 2-0 win. I'm hoping it's not the same story. I know there's going to be rotations on our side and I know that we need to fight back, fight back after that 3-3 draw against West Brom and try and take our chin, chin up and try and get a good result in a London derby. But do not underestimate Jose. Do not underestimate second season Jose because I smell a shit house. I really hope we just put we just batter through them because I know their fixture list has been an absolute mess. I know it will take something out of that side. But if we underestimate them, it could be a really frustrating 90 minutes. But guys, this is the end of the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Carefree Lewis G. And I'll see you guys very, very soon. Up the chill.